Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Talking SaaS. Thank you guys so much for joining me. You know what? I have two superb guests coming on today. Of course, the second one is Dan Murphy. He is going to be giving us our monthly pro wrestling history lesson. He is an author. He is a former PWI writer. He is the historian to go to on anything wrestling, and I'm so glad to have him be a part of the show. But before we get to him and our first guest today, let's talk a little bit about social media. Don't forget to go and follow me on social media. You have Twitter and Instagram at Sassy Steffi. If you feel like supporting the show, make sure you go to patreon.com slash Sassy Steffi. Lots of amazing content that comes out there weekly that is exclusive to my Patreon members only. And tiers start at only $2 a month. So go subscribe today. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, or if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button there as well because you never wanna miss a second of Talking SaaS. And in fact, on YouTube, make sure you hit the bell notification. That's important because just last week, I put out a special edition Talking SaaS where I was talking about the Browns pregame show. So I hope you guys do that for me, okay? Now on to today's guest. You have seen his work everywhere. He's been on every, pretty much every WWE programming imaginable, Raw, SmackDown, pay-per-views, everywhere, including Total Divas. And if you're watching on YouTube, you happen to see his work on every single episode. That's right. I have Rob Schomberger. He is WWE's resident artist, and he is going to tell us all about his art and everything that he has done and some amazing stories. But of course, only he can tell you them, right? So let's get started. Here's Rob Schomberger. Hey guys, what's up? It is Talking Sass, and I am sitting here talking to WWE's resident artist, Rob Schomberger. Rob, how's it going? I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Oh, definitely. Thank you for taking time out of your vacation to come <laughs> on the show because I know you're you're busy still working. I see a lot of uh, artistic stuff there behind you. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, I, what what's behind me is done for the moment, and <laughs> um, I, I, I'm taking time off until about you know. Uh, January 4th uh, handling you know social and that stuff but otherwise kicking back and breathing for a while yeah I mean I remember god I can't remember what year it was maybe 2015 I think when I was in Kansas City and Miss Natural brought me by your studio and that was yeah. the we had met and your studio just blew me away it was so beautiful <laughs> in downtown Kansas City and just this you go up into this this just crazy amount of WWE portraits everywhere. And I was just like, <laughs> I'm in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that um that was two studios ago. But uh yeah, I loved that place. I didn't really want to leave, but they turned it into an Airbnb. <laughs> oh, what a bummer. Yeah. Uh so now I uh we, we got a house and and I took over the attic and like when it's nice out, we have a sunroom and I'll work out of there, which is gorgeous. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I miss that place too. Oh, it was beautiful. And that was so fun. I was glad that Miss Natural was like, hey, we're going to go see a friend of mine. And I'm just like tagging along. I'm like, sure, no problem. And then we end up, <laughs> and I was like, why didn't you tell me this is awesome? <laughs> <laughs> she's wild. <laughs> oh, but she's a, yeah. I, her. I don't actually, I don't think I've even seen her since then. We just had different schedules and everything going on and. Right crazy so being home with COVID and everything obviously you said you you work now in your attic and when it's nice out you're working out on the sun in the sunroom what has it been like I mean has your job as an artist slowed down or are you still keeping consistent um I'm not on the road with WWE of course uh mm -hmm. I would do about a show a month or so about average uh on that so obviously I'm not doing that right now um which gives me more time to work I'm still doing six days plus a week, mm -hmm. um, but uh, if anything, it's giving me more time to to work on the art itself, which I kind of enjoy. Like, and, and the the whole making of the art thing that hasn't changed at all, uh, and and my online sales are up, um, so I'm busier on that front. Uh, it's you know just shuffling things around. Well, that's great that at least you're, you know, able to keep going And like, I know with COVID, a lot of people don't want to go out. You don't have to go anywhere unless right. you're 
I guess paint supplies or something like that. But I mean, even now you can have them shipped to your house, I'm sure. I do. <laughs> <laughs> the less interaction with people right now is probably the better. <laughs> yeah, I'm a hermit crab anyway. Uh, well, my former studio mate actually jokes that I've been uh, training for social distancing for about 18 years. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's just pretty accurate. <laughs> But see, you're such a personable person. So, I mean, I find that hard to believe. I mean, obviously, I've only met you a handful of times. I've seen you at a couple of WrestleManias at the uh, Access where you're painting these just beautiful, usually, like, usually, how many hours do you put in on WrestleMania weekend? I know it's like oh, a day's work. Uh, I don't know, 500. <laughs> I... I w- I, I try to take the the mindset that I'm going to work as hard as the WWE staffers that are in the area where I am. And if anyone knows, those people don't sleep. So that means I don't either. Uh, you know, because they're all trying to match uh, Vince's schedule, which, you know, he famously sleeps like three to five hours a night. Um, so the rest of us do that too, <laughs> at least during WrestleMania. <laughs> I've been a part of WrestleMania weekends, obviously not with the WWE part of it. Well, at least not professionally with the WWE part of it. But I know even like on the other side of things with the independent uh, shows that are running, the conventions that are going on, the shows that are going on, just, and depending on what city you're in, it's just mayhem and no one's really sleeping. No. Whatever days you're there. Because some people, I mean, WrestleMania weekend usually starts a week ahead of time for WWE staffers and and some of the wrestlers and stuff like that but like usually wednesday thursday is when fans really start pouring into these cities and it is a non-stop party especially in party cities like new orleans i've been a part of new york city i've been a part of it's it's non-stop yeah (laughs) (laughs) and it doesn't stop for like well at least for wwe i know it starts that week before like i said and go at least a week and a half usually for you or for them yeah, because there's also the whole thing of traveling there before and traveling back and um, whether I'm driving there or flying, uh, you know, and planning for all that. And then the last few years for my exhibit, I staff it as well. So having to take care of all my staff as well and coordinating all that, uh, it, <laughs> it's, it's wild. Um, what little hair I have left is going to be gone after a couple more of those. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's go back to the beginning and let's talk about what got you into art. So when you were a kid, I'm sure probably taking art classes was one of the things. Is that what sparked interest for you to do art was going to school or was it something else that sparked your imagination? It started with comic books. Um, I I got my first one when I was eight and like spent the weekend redrawing everything out of it and just knew like this is what I want to do with my life and uh everyone thought it was a phase it was not (laughs) um i I knew that i wanted to make something that would make other people feel the way that that art made me feel and uh for a long time you know chasing comics and then uh, eventually uh grew into fine art and from there finding the subject matter of wrestling now let's talk a little bit about that because I, like I told you earlier, I did a real, real deep dive here on the internet, <laughs> and I was really shocked at the amount of information that I found. And for somebody being a hermit, you have a <laughs> lot of information out there on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> when you got interested, okay, so there's kind of two parts here I want to go into. So first, I guess what I read online is saying that CM Punk really inspired you to start doing the portraits of the WWE stars or any other wrestling yeah around then um like the the vibe around him and he was very artist friendly um one of his shirts was designed by jill thompson a really famous comic book artist who's become a friend of mine since um but like seeing that he was so receptive to that and also the the fans that were into him were into the kind of stuff i was making as well so it really felt like a, a natural fit uh, like when I started the the project that I'm still working on, the Champions Collection, where I'm painting every world champion going all the way back to George Hackenschmidt. Um, the first one I did was Harley Race because I'm a Kansas City guy. Harley yeah. was Kansas City. Uh, and then Punk was the, the second one. 
Amazing. And now that's definitely something I want to talk to you about because I read that you wanted to do all the world champions. And at that time, whenever the article was written that I wrote, there was 208. Obviously that has gone up a few since that time. Right. How many have you completed? Um, I think I'm over a third of the way through. Uh, it's slowed down a little bit, um, because of my WWE responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's, uh, I, I view it as a lifetime project anyway. So if I did them all now, what then, right? Like yeah. do a new one whenever they pop up. But, um, uh, I, I think soon I'll, I'll start getting back into those. They're bigger paintings. And, um, so when I was doing those, I had a bigger studio, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, having a slightly smaller one now uh, has, has held me back on that as well. That's understandable. Now, going back into with what got you into the wrestling portraits, I read also that JR is the one that discovered you at a Make-A-Wish Foundation fundraiser? Uh, kind of, sort of, yeah. I had met Jim a year before at the Dan Gable Wrestling Museum uh, mm -hmm. for their uh, pro wrestling weekend that they do. Uh, met him and Jerry Briscoe and stayed in touch over the course of that year. And WWE was coming to Kansas City for SmackDown. And I thought this would be perfect to do uh, a tie-in Make-A-Wish fundraiser event with WWE being in town. And I reached out to Jim about it to see if he could pass that along to WWE. He was still with the company at the time and you, I, I just wanted to get a tweet you know like that's all I was after um, and Jim went the extra step without me saying anything and, and called Triple H's office and was like hey we need to be working with this guy and uh, Triple H's right hand a guy named Ben Brown that does all the archive like anytime you see the tours of the warehouse that's Ben okay. um, he uh, had been familiar with my work we'd met at the CAC that year and he's like oh yeah rob's great and uh so they call me and they're like hey we're gonna help you out with this and triple h tweeted out about it it was great but they're like we also want to work with you and we had a department head meeting about all the ways that we can work with you and here's a multi-year plan we have are you interested wow <laughs> I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> Send me the details and I'll get back to you. <laughs> and uh, uh, they've been fantastic to work with. Uh, it's mostly the the people on the WWE shop side, um, but also, uh, you know, over the years, I've become friendly with pretty much everyone in the company. You know, like Vince has one of my paintings hanging up in his uh, conference room now. It's it's wild. Yeah, I was gonna say because. I read also your paintings are in private collections. They're at WWE headquarters. When you watched WrestleMania this year, you saw all your paintings in the PC Center. Uh, you have one up or maybe multiple at the National Wrestling Hall of Fame with Dan uh, Gable Museum. You've been in commercials. You've, you've had your paintings featured on toys, collectibles. <laughs> you're, you do artist, artistry for posters, for movies. I mean, you just, your artwork is everywhere. It's it, even talking sass. <laughs> your own sample of your work on display at all times yes ma'am <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's crazy um wwe has opened up so many opportunities for me you know through everyone they work with and and the the audience that they have uh the the super passionate wrestling fans uh it's uh just completely changed my life in a purely positive way it's mm -hmm. wonderful that's amazing because like like I said this this photo actually somebody got for me I think it was my birthday or something and they sent it to me and I was just like oh my god this is amazing <laughs> if, if, if Miss Natural would have told me when we were going to hang out that we were going to be going to see you I would have brought that with me oh <laughs> so that could have been <laughs> personally by you because I mean it's it's always been one of my obviously I'm a huge sensational Sherry fan and that's always been like one of my prized possessions that I have because one of the things with your art that I find is you don't like, it's the essence of the person. Like when I see Sensational Sherry in this picture, I feel how she was and like that attitude and just the look Excellent. on her face and everything. And like, I love that. And that's how I feel with all of your artwork. Like I can feel the way that person is portraying their body in, in that particular 
artwork that you did. Thank you. Um, that means a lot. Uh, one, because I like you personally, but um, <laughs> two, uh, that is exactly what I'm after with the art. Um, like when I started with this, it, it was because I realized no one else was doing serious fine art of pro wrestling. Like if there was, it was, it was making fun of it mm -hmm. and, or it was ironic, you know, and I, I didn't want that. I wanted mm -hmm. art that made me feel the way uh, that it is to watch the shows, to be there live and watch the, these amazing athletes. And um, so with every piece, it's not just about making it look like them. It's about getting that feeling across that energy uh, is 100% what I'm after. So hearing you say that unprompted is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. I mean, that's honestly how I feel. I mean, like I said, just the sensational Sherry. And I mean, I think when I wrestled, I tried to, to portray her as well with like this attitude. And like, like I said, just looking at this picture, you can see the attitude that she had. And it's just, it's amazing. Like, I don't know how else to explain it. And like, for that to be what you actually want to come off, I think that's fantastic that, you know, your work does that the way that you want it to. Awesome. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. So more that I want to talk, what is your actual process? Like, how do you sit down and determine what, which wrestler you're going to work on and what the theme is going to be around that photo or that painting actually? It's a, uh a matter of who I haven't painted in a while, or if it's someone that I have never painted, um, that's getting attention. Uh, I, it's difficult because this is the sole way that I make my money. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, and, and like, I'm not on WWE salary. I don't have a guarantee. Right. Um, it's, it's by what sells and I get a percentage and that's it and uh so sometimes i do have to make the decision of like okay there's someone new but they haven't really connected with the audience in a big way yet mm -hmm. so i could do one of them or i could do a new one of oscar and make sure i'm paying my rent that week yeah. you know <laughs> um so uh those kind of factors go into it of course but also um sometimes i'll i'll put people in the uh you know, fit it in because I'm passionate as well about what they're doing and and I want to help them you know give them another tool that they can use um and, and then I'll you know I I watch the shows the way that fans do I want to get that same sort of energy uh, uh so that I can con then convey that in the painting like we were talking about mm -hmm. and uh then I'll play around with uh, just like, okay, sometimes I'll also look at, is there a way I want to do a painting that I haven't uh, in a while that would work with a certain subject matter? And, and I'll pick someone that way. You know, like the way that I do a Bray Wyatt painting is completely different from the way that I do a John Cena one. Amazing. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, like uh, I, I say with that, uh, you know, if I'm going to do an Undertaker painting, it's the same way that if you were to do a Batman drawing. You can do whatever, mm -hmm. but if I'm going to do a John Cena, it's the same way that I would do a Superman, right? Like you do that person. Yeah. Although even now with John, like I can push it a little bit in different directions just because he's become that living pop culture person. Yeah. He's really expanded his repertoire in the last like 10 years for sure. Oh yeah. And, and you know, just even recently that, uh, uh, fun house match at WrestleMania, like, that opened up a lot of possibilities for me. Like I'm watching that, like, okay, one, I really enjoy this. And two, wow, a lot of new possibilities here. Yeah, you could, that match, like, even for me, like I sat back watching this going, this is fantastic. Like it's <laughs> giving you the John Cena that everybody's always asked for that WWE never wanted to give you. Yeah, uh, but it was also like a, an art house short film. <laughs> it was yeah. wonderful, it's cool. <laughs> But, well, speaking of who gives you like the most, like when you think about creating something, who is the person that you just get like this creative flow going and it just, it's unlimited at that point. Is there anybody specific? Um, the, the general answer is anyone that already has an over the top persona, mm -hmm. um, then like it's, it's okay for me to push it even more. Um, but 
the one person that I probably am the most inspired creatively uh, that fits that bill as well as Asuka. Um, I, I feel like I can do my very best work with her. And it, no matter how far and crazy I push it, it still is very natural to her. Uh, and, and then she's just so wonderful to work with too. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Asuka. Asuka, that's great. Now you also do your YouTube series, Canvas to Canvas, and you have done so many artworks there. How is that also doing your show? It Because you're featuring all these WWE wrestlers. It's a YouTube show. How does that work for you? Like, can you feature other people on there? Like your other paintings and your other artistic uh, works? Uh, well, that show is on WWE's YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. uh, so it needs to be whoever is under their umbrella and good graces and <laughs> legends contract or whatever. Um, and, and, you know, same thing with the music that's used on there. Uh, but that's like another one of those awesome things about working with WWE is they uh, just give me that slot. I shoot, direct, edit the whole thing and just submit it to them and they put it up. And I can probably count on one hand the number of times where they've come back and just said like, hey, can you tweak this thing? And it's normally like a, a music cue. Like they're like, okay, you used Edge's old song. Can you use his new song instead? That yeah. kind of thing. Um, uh, and yeah, I don't know that they've ever rejected one um it, it's just a, a wide open platform they give me and uh some of the i i think overall we've had over 13 million views on those uh sometimes these numbers are just staggering and uh um the it's a it's a much younger audience too mm -hmm. so now i'll have people that and i've been doing it with them so long i think seven years now uh that people will come up to me that are in their younger 20s and be like man i grew up watching your stuff <laughs> <laughs> which is wild <laughs> or the the best ones are the ones where they say like i got into doing art because of watching your show um and like i get that from people all around the world uh which is tremendous like I, most people can't name a lot of artists like most lay people if you say like name an artist they're probably going to say one of the ninja turtles picasso and bob ross yeah <laughs> yeah uh and now it's me too you know, yeah, there's of i know you of course <laughs> you know now there's yeah millions of people that uh because they're into wrestling they find my stuff and, and it opens up all new doorways for them well, when you say that people are inspired by your art, what kind of advice would you give to an artist, whether they want to pursue wrestling portraits or just another version of art for themselves? Uh, the main thing there, and I guess it's like all around life advice, which is uh, do it all the time. Um, and every time that you do a new piece of art, it's informed by everything that you did before everything that you learned from every other thing that you've done before that, uh, what went right, what went wrong, what happened accidentally that you can replicate in a different way. Uh, and, and it's not about like making the one perfect piece of art. It's about learning from everything you've done before so that the next thing that you do is that much better. That's beautiful. And like you said, that could go for life and advice for anything really yeah. <laughs> that's great my my niece is actually she's huge into anime and in probably the last two or three years which she's uh 14 now she's been doing her own anime and oh like, wonderful her like grow and stuff like last year for christmas she actually um painted a uh my husband as a super saiyan oh cool and <laughs> for Christmas and I, it's so cool like I have it in my bedroom like there's not a lot of things like I display in my bedroom like you know artwork like personal artwork so like for her I'm like this is amazing this has got to be in our bedroom because she did such a phenomenal job and she keeps growing as an artist so oh that's super we're, cool when we have this up on YouTube I'm definitely going to be like make sure you go and check this out <laughs> I'm not big into wrestling her brothers are but she definitely loves art so I'm going to have awesome. her, maybe I'll have her even contact you. Cause I think please be awesome. Any young artists out there that want to reach out. I'm, I'm here. I, I love uh, passing along 
anything I've learned because people did that for me mm -hmm. and I know how much it meant to me. So, you know, I recognize the position I'm in now and being able to do that for others for sure. Awesome. So now with Canvas the Canvas, you obviously say is on WWE's network, uh, not the network, but the YouTube channel. And you've also been on like a plethora of their programming. I mean, like you said, you've gone to a couple, uh, like you used to when shows were traveling, obviously. <laughs> Once a month, you would be at one of the shows. But I mean, you've been on Ms. TV. You've been on Total Divas. I mean, do you know that's about to happen when they're, when you're in the backstage areas? Or are they just kind of surprising you <laughs> at those moments? Every time it's like a camera is right there in my face. Um, <laughs> the, the Ms. and Mrs. one was the only one where it was kind of set up. Uh -huh. um, but otherwise they're like, oh, Rob's here. Let's do something with Rob. And like the, 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 the wildest one, the craziest one was when I was on with uh, Steph and Triple H and uh, the other Steffi. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, trust me, she is the Stephanie. I will take it back to you. <laughs> um, I, I was painting in the back and I saw that like they started setting up lighting and I'm like, oh no, I'm going to have to tear everything down. You know, like just because that's the nature of the beast. Mm -hmm. And uh, Stephanie sees me there and obviously it was her and, and Paul that brought me into the company. So um, she comes up and she's like, you know what? instead of the the uh, walkthrough segment that we were going to do, we're going to start it with us talking to Rob. And um, it was like five minutes before going live. And like, this wasn't a pre-tape, this is live live, right? And uh, it was August and I had been out front painting uh, for the, you know, for the crowd before they were let in. And it was really humid out and really hot. And I had my like backstage sticker on my shirt. Mm -hmm. And uh, normally I have a blazer that I'll wear in the back, but I had just, I had so much going on. I didn't bring it in with me that day. Mm -hmm. Rookie mistake, like <laughs> always be TV ready. And this is how I learned it because right before the camera turned on, she said, oh, take that sticker off because they're worried about people duplicating them, right? Uh -huh. So I, I take it off and there's a perfect sweat circle. <laughs> <laughs> all my shirt and of course like all the the staffers that were behind the camera as soon as like the segment was done they were like it looks like you have a mustard spot on your shirt oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know like uh, that speaks to uh Steph and Triple H so much that like they changed that right at the last minute, literal last minute. And that was a, the thing that led into that big tear apart between Lesnar and Undertaker in the mm -hmm. ring. Uh, and it was here in Kansas City. So my wife and my mom were there in the front row and got to like see it up on the screen. It was tremendous. Well, I'm sure that your family, just like any time that you're going to be at a WWE event, or I mean, I met your wife at some of the the uh, WrestleManias that we have uh, seen each other at. I'm sure that they still probably like every time you're on the TV, they're probably just like takes their breath away because it's so cool just to see their husband or their son you know, <laughs> up on the TV screen doing. Yeah, my at that specific one, my wife was like screaming as loud as she could, "That's my husband!" <laughs> and the people next to her were like, "Cool." <laughs> <laughs> But it is cool. Like, yeah, I think what you do, I mean, you do something not a lot of people in their life can say that they do a job that they love, that they're passionate about and get paid to be a part of what they love. Like, yeah. not only do you love to paint and be an artist, but you love the WWE and you love professional wrestling. So to do that and be able to make a living, I mean, that's got to feel good in the soul. It does. And, and the, no one had done it before me. Mm -hmm. uh, that like the strength of my work, which, boy, I look at the stuff that I was doing seven, eight years ago when I was getting my foot in the door. I'm like, wow, like, <laughs> I'm only, I feel like I'm only doing the good stuff now, but that's every artist, right? Like, yeah, you know, I'm sure if you look at your early matches versus your later ones, but you're like, I kept getting booked somehow. Um, <laughs> that, that's how... And, and I also learned early on to not correct people when they yeah. uh, say that they like something like, you know, however people connect with the art, that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, but yes, it is uh, humbling. 
and there was a an access where it was I think the first time where I was inside of access instead of <laughs> out in the hallway, like I paid my dues. I was literally set up out in the hallway yeah, uh, for several I years. Work in the hallway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was the first time I was inside and like when they opened the doors to access, it's a madhouse. It's like a, a zombie movie, people just running everywhere. And I had just stepped away to the restroom and was walking back right when they opened the doors and someone pushed me to the side didn't see me and i hear them yell get out of the way i got to get to rob's booth before he sells out <laughs> I didn't realize it was you well yeah then i walked up and took his money uh, <laughs> but that was like the moment where it really felt real to me well, that's fantastic and what what a funny story that the person that was moving you out of the way was going yeah. to your booth to buy before you sold out of any of the prints that they were looking to get. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, I don't take any of this for granted. Uh, and like around town, uh, when I was still living downtown, mm -hmm. there'd be times that I'd be just, you know, walking over to get a burrito across the street and someone uh, stopped, like screeched on their brakes in the intersection, rolled down their window. And I'm like, oh, what's happening? And the guy just points and says, I love your art. And kept driving. <laughs> that's like the best feeling, though. Like and it was someone I had no idea who it was. It was a total stranger, and they just recognized me on the street. And that happens every now and then. Like I'll be checking out at Target, and like someone will like look at uh, the name on my card, and then look up at me like oh, it's him. Uh, or <laughs> I had uh, a few weeks ago like broke our uh, poop scoop on our for our litter box, and went to the pet store to get another one, and the guy was like wait you're that like wrestling art guy right i'm like yeah and he's like i love your stuff i'm like great where do you have your pooper scoopers at <laughs> have you any, like besides uh, obviously the few stories that you you told here do you have any like crazy stories like anything that's just like completely like whack of people that you've met um well, I mean, <laughs> that I can say publicly. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this is pro wrestling. Only me and you, right? Well, okay, here's a fun one. I was at a house show backstage. And w when I'm working backstage, just to get like print sign that we then sell on the WWE auction site. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had a bunch of them set up and uh, I was around the corner, but still visible. And is when Sami Zayn and uh, Neville were still like doing the house show loop before coming up to the main roster. They were still NXT guys. They come in and I had been told they would be there. So I had prints ready for them. And uh, they're like, oh, wow, we have Shamburgers. <laughs> and they're like, they're definitely going to be calling us up. And like, that was like a, an internal thing. Like getting something from me is like right up there is like one of the real things for, for them in turn. Oh, that's uh, a fantastic story. Yeah, yeah. And of course, after that, they totally no sold it around me. Like they could, <laughs> I'm sure they were embarrassed that they acted like fans in front of me. <laughs> no, I could understand that excitement because I mean, you're busting your ass trying to get onto the main roster, especially if you're an NXT talent. And you're just hoping that somebody takes a takes, you know, is acknowledging the hard work that you put in. And then you're doing the house show loop. And then you come and you see that you have art of them, which of course is ultimately flattering anyway. <laughs> but then you're like, oh wait, maybe, okay, I'm on the house shows. I got this going on. I must be doing something right. So right. I think that would be like the best feeling for them too, you know? Yeah. Uh and um you know, several of the people that we've become like actual friends with my wife and i um notably uh charlotte and natalia natty is every bit as wonderful as people tell you she is just tremendous like to the point that uh when our uh cat passed away a couple years ago uh you know she texted katie and i to to say like you know you know, pass along her condolences. Like she's that level of a good person. She is because I've met her, gosh, a good, good amount of times too. 
and she's just the ultimate sweetest person in the world like what you see is what you get with natty and it's yeah. amazing because that's not a lot of people that you see on tv unfortunately no it's not um <laughs> but with her yeah the very first time i was backstage uh and, and the the ww staffers it didn't have a clue who i was didn't care i was the latest guy they had to babysit you know <laughs> and uh they were like you know very much like kid gloves on with me around the talent and like natty pushes the guy out of the way she's like rob it's so nice to finally meet you like gives me a hug talks about where she had gotten a an owen hart painting from me like where she had it hanging up in her house it showed me a picture of that she's like and let's take a picture together so that i can put you out on twitter and uh and then the first time she met katie like they had communicated on social for a few years but uh katie uh was with me at uh, a hall of fame we were in the back working there and i was you know katie was real nervous like everyone's around us you know the mcmahons are there arnold schwarzenegger was there <laughs> it was nuts and uh but like katie was the most nervous to meet natty and uh i was taking her up to meet natty who uh was inducting medusa that year and she was just just splendid the way that she was looking like she said that like they actually had to like sew her into the dress but um <laughs> she like pushes right past me and gives katie the big hug she's like katie it is so nice to finally meet you and like katie just like just fell apart you know yeah, <laughs> yeah the most wonderful yeah when i met natalia it was actually um well side note this story uh we were going to the gym my husband and I and it was the day Monday Night Raw was in Montreal and he like he was like get up we got to go to the gym I'm like it's like seven in the morning I don't want to <laughs> you know like I don't I don't want to go right now but he got me up out of bed and I wasn't thinking anything about anything that day you know I was just like okay yeah we're going to Raw later whatever and but like we get there and I see John Cena and Nikki Bella who were at that time together and I'm like uh -huh. shit man because I'm wearing, a, it was a t-shirt. I'll never forget this because I was so embarrassed that, uh, of, of wearing the shirt that particular day. It was um, a promotion that I had worked for does um, promotion, does, I'm sorry, fundraisers for animals. And usually it, it's some kind of, um, you know, help to help them out. So uh -huh. I was wearing this shirt and it was an in your house logo, but it said in the dog house because it was a promotion <laughs> for them. And for for dogs that time and i was like i'm wearing it it's the exact in your house logo bright bright yellow t-shirt because <laughs> like after john cena and nikki everybody started coming in and i was like oh my god so i'm like trying to like do my jog but i'm like trying to keep my shirt covered at the same time <laughs> i go into the locker room and i'm i'm starting to get you know, put my things away, get ready to take a shower, whatever. And I turn and I just see Natalia standing like a couple lockers down to me. And I'm like, at that time, I had never met her. I had, you know, we follow each other on Instagram and social and all that kind of stuff. But I was like, oh my God, it's Natalia. So I'm like, hey, Natty. And she's like, hey, I follow you on Instagram. And I was like, yeah, you do. <laughs> That's her. <laughs> she sat there in the locker room and talked to me, I don't know, maybe five minutes before she went out and did her workout. We got a picture and everything. And I was just like floored. And then every time I've seen her since, she's just been an absolute doll. Like remembers you. Yes. Gives you, like you said, the biggest hugs. She is a sweetheart. Love Natalia. One hundred percent, the greatest. <laughs> and and people don't uh, realize, like one, just how good she is. Uh, but like everything she does behind the scenes too. Um, you know, like she's helping out so many of the the younger talent uh you know because she's a wrestling genius and uh, you know just grew up in it she's forgotten more than most of us will ever know yeah. and um like at house shows sometimes she's even helping the girls do their makeup i mean she's the best the best yeah i've never i mean obviously if you watch total divas you might hear a few negative things about her but i mean <laughs> but yeah. when you meet her in person i i don't know anybody that could tell you a negative thing about natty and there's a few people like that in the business, you know? Yeah, like, but yeah. not many. She stands out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And you said that she had purchased an Owen Hart um, painting from you prior. And I was actually, another little tidbit that I found on the internet that I thought was interesting. 
The first wrestling world champion to buy a portrait from you was David Arquette. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, was, how did that happen? Like, what was that? <laughs> it, it, uh, uh, I, had, I think I had tagged him on, on Twitter that I was working on this project. Mm-hmm. And it was the the Kickstarter I was doing to start off the the Champions Collection, and um, he like retweeted it. And he's like, "And when you do mine, I'm buying it." And so, of course, you know, I, I did that real real soon. And uh, we still haven't ever like met in person. Uh, it's like come real close. Like there was a Mania Week where we were supposed to meet up, but you know, like we said, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> when I sent the painting to him, it uh, was in a, uh, a bigger box at the time. And I didn't have all my shipping materials that I have now. So it was like whatever big box I could find. And uh, his assistant was like, it was like, I think for car parts, maybe. And so I get a call from his assistant that uh, was like, yeah, we received your car parts and we didn't order any. And I'm like, what? And he's like, I work for uh, an actor, a very famous one, and you sent a muffler and we didn't order it. We don't want it. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, who do you work for? What's the name? He's like, David Arquette. I'm like, oh, that's his painting he requested from me. That was just the box. I'm like, you didn't open it? He's like, no. <laughs> Um, but uh, last I heard, he's got it hanging up in his living room. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. He's, he's one that, one of those champions. I mean, you, of course, everybody back when he won the championship was like, what is going on? Right. And, but I mean, he has grown so much within the wrestling business. I mean, just the last couple of years, he did that tour. He was, you know, doing the independence. I mean, he's really passionate about wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you even hear the stories when, he was doing the the brief run with WCW. He was, uh, you know, like picking up the bar tab for everyone. And mm-hmm. that crew back then, <laughs> Ric Flair was there, man. Uh, <laughs> but but to, for David, especially at that point in his career, that was dropping the bucket. You know, that was yeah. nothing for him. Uh, but uh, I, I've heard like um, the money that he made from that run in WCW, he donated to Kurt Hennig's family. Oh, he didn't even take it. it. Uh, yeah, like quality dude. That's amazing. I haven't yet met him, but I mean, he's on my bucket list of people that I just want to sit and talk to and pick his brain just of everything he's ever yeah. done. I mean, I'm also a huge Scream fanatic. I don't like a lot of horror movies, but I do love Scream. Right. Yeah, he's great in those. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, I mean, out of everything that you've done, who is the favoritest? Uh, favoritist isn't really good who's your most favorite painting that you've done maybe not necessarily your favorite person but the favorite painting that you've done yeah um the the one that'll probably always be the dearest to my heart is a piece that i did of ultimate warrior with connor the crusher um and it was uh when they announced that connor was getting the first warrior award uh, I reached out to uh, WWE and was like, hey, can I do this painting and surprise the family with it backstage? Like, I'm not, I, I just want this genuine human moment, right? Mm-hmm. And because uh, I had become friendly with uh, Steve, Connor's father, uh, over that year. And I had hand painted Warrior's coat that he wore in his final appearance. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it was very meaningful to me to just do this thing for this family and um so that one uh like yeah after steve went out and did this just amazingly real and emotional speech uh at the hall of fame backstage they do like these you know post interviews with the people so they had me hiding behind the curtain with the painting and i had actually been sitting with steve earlier like hiding the painting from him (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he's like oh you're here and like i i was helping put him at ease because he's just a civilian you yeah. know and, and again schwarzenegger was there uh <laughs> it was a big thing um so i uh uh come out give 
the painting to to him and Jackson Connor's little brother, and uh, you know we just talk and and have this very real moment, and uh, you know the lights are on, the cameras there. I didn't care, right? I was there for the family. Right. So they they turn off the lights, and standing there are Vince, Steph, and Triple H. And uh, you know, like Steph, of course, being who she is, gives me a big hug. Triple H shakes my hand, and Vince gave me a nod. And that's the only in-person interaction I've had with Vince, and that's enough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I've been told he likes the stuff. That's good enough. Yeah. Uh, and you know, otherwise when I'm at shows, I don't want to interrupt him or anything. You know, he's making his art. Yeah. Uh, so I, I stay out of the way, but, um, in that moment, like, I'm glad I didn't know they were there. Oh yeah. Because was- I, w- I would have been in my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Instead I got to just, you know, focus on the family and, and, you know, do the special thing for them that I, I know Steve still has that painting in his bedroom. Uh, and, I don't think I'll ever do anything that'll mean more to me on a personal level than that one. Uh, I think that's just beautiful. And I'm sure that Steve just, I'm sure he was in absolute tears at that moment. Cause I can only imagine the feelings of being at the hall of fame and accepting an award on behalf of his son. And then you, a personal friend of his coming out and giving him this, this, well, not coming out on stage, but being there <laughs> backstage to hand him this personalized, you know, painting that you had done, I'm sure that the emotions were just running crazy at that moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My wife like totally messed up her makeup. <laughs> <laughs> she was crying so hard. And then she was embarrassed that like, <laughs> again, like, cause she sees the, you know, those three are standing there watching, mm-hmm. but also like this whole thing. And she's like, Oh God, Rob, don't introduce me to them right now. You know? <laughs> But that's so beautiful. Like I said, like to have that moment to be able to share, especially with somebody that you had gotten to know over the past year, like you said, I mean, that's, that definitely, even, even while you were telling that story, I was like, don't cry, don't cry. (laughs) I cry at everything. And my husband will tell everybody. (laughs) Yeah. It, uh, again, that was one of those moments where it was all like, okay, this is why I'm here doing this. Mm -hmm. Um, and, And I, you know, have done other things like this that don't make it on camera that people will never see the paintings except for the families for who it matters. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, I, I love that part of the job. Yeah, I can only imagine. Like if I, if my if I had a form of art that inspired other people, and you know something happens, and I could make that family happy or you know contribute in some way to ease their pain that they're yeah. going through, that would be amazing it's the the purest part of of what i do that's beautiful (laughs) but i mean also something else that i i researched about you that i found interesting is you are the um the mother Teresa award your art is can you explain that because like i was trying to read up on it and i wasn't understanding all of it but i mean we're talking about good deeds and obviously mother Teresa. (laughs) yeah um i I don't know how uh, um, much that was used, but there was definitely a year where like the the plaque that was given to the Mother Teresa International Peace Prize, I think it's called, like the plaque had a painting uh, that I did on it. Um, pretty neat. <laughs> that is neat. Your your painting was an award. I mean, that's pretty outstanding, I would think. And yeah. I mean, it's Mother Teresa. I mean, you're sitting here doing professional wrestlers the majority of the time, and then you have Mother Teresa that you do. And I saw the artwork. It's it's on. If you look up on Google, you can find it. It's a beautiful painting of her. Thank you. Um, the The Catholic side of my family really appreciated that one. They, <laughs> they may not care about the wrestling stuff, but they they, they really appreciated that one. <laughs> yeah. And another cool thing is that in 2014, you were awarded the Award of Merit by the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Dan Gable Museum. How was yeah. that? Um, that that was a surprise. I didn't know that was coming, you know, like I'm, I'm just sitting there at the banquet and 
they're like, okay, now we're going to honor Rob. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> this is happening. I'm glad I have my nice jacket on. Uh, no, no sweat stain that night. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, uh, the the museum um, has done a lot for me uh, to to get my work out there and seen and uh, to exhibit it there. You know, like every artist wants to say that their art is in a museum. Um, I've got that. Uh, there was one year for the the pro wrestling wings uh, annual inductions. Uh, mm-hmm. They let me take over the whole museum, like wow. everything in the museum. Uh, uh, like every wall had my art on it. Um, that was super rad. Uh, and, and yeah, just the the people there have uh, uh, been great supporters. I think they have my physically largest painting. It's either them or 2K Games. 2K might have the actual biggest one. I think they have the second biggest one. But it's a a massive mural, like a a whole wall uh, that I did for them. And it was a mix of uh, Olympic and pro wrestlers. And, you know, some that bridge both, like like, uh, Danny Hodge or Luthez. Uh, Really cool. Kurt Angle, of course. (laughs) That's amazing. Like, just the opportunities that you've been awarded by doing something that you love to do in in your art i mean that's what other better way could you spend your life i would imagine (laughs) yeah i i uh i joke that i don't need to ever gamble because i've (laughs) like defied every odd and hit the massive jackpot Mm -hmm. um yeah uh so fortunate that's amazing rob i want to thank you so much for being on the show and just sharing all of your stories with us and on talking sass so please tell everybody where they can find you on social media and anything you have coming up that you would like to get out into the future. Or sure. Get out the crowd. On uh, Twitter and Instagram, I'm at Rob Schamberger. And uh, my website is schambergerlabs.com. Uh, I have all of my WWE artwork available there. Uh, over 360 prints, over 200 original paintings, uh, all fully licensed with WWE uh, and WWE shop, WWE auction, uh, WWE shop, of course, has both the prints and t-shirts with the art on it and canvas to canvas every now Monday morning uh, on WWE's YouTube channel. Uh, I uh, joke that I'm the Bob Ross of pro wrestling, but with less (laughs) hair, (laughs) but you can see how I make the paintings and what my thoughts are going into each one. And uh, uh, coming up, um, mostly uh, keeping things going with Schamberger Labs. I've got uh, uh, new art that is available every week there. And uh, as I gear up towards uh, what phase two will be, uh, I'll leave that secret hanging there. (laughs) Awesome. Yeah, because I know you recently teased on social media that you had a secret coming up. But I didn't find out what that secret is yet. So not um, yet. <laughs> I'll, it'll be revealed in March. In March. Oh, that's yeah. still some time away, though. It is. That's okay. Leave. It'll be 2021 time instead of 2020 time. <laughs> 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 I think time will be a little bit more normal next year. I'm hoping. <laughs> anyway, Rob, you have been a delight. Thank you so much for being a part of Talking Sass, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Once again, it is time for the one and only pro wrestling historian and author, Dan Murphy, to give us our monthly history lesson in pro wrestling. Hey, Dan. Hey, Steph. It's uh, it's glad, uh, very glad to be here. I was just noticing I've got the inadvertent Cleveland Browns colors going on, so that fits in with your 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 whole motif here. So I'm very glad that I could accommodate that way. So thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, always. You're such a delight to have on the show. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. Well, this month, I've got two quick items for you, uh, both from January. So kind of looking back this month in history. And I thought the first one, this would be one that you would appreciate. January 28th, 1937. Oh, that's throwing it back. It's going back. Yeah. But it's an important date. It was the date that Mildred Burke defeated Clara Mortensen to win the women's title, essentially what would become the Women's World Championship. Now, what happened is Billy Wolf, who was the women's wrestling promoter who then had married Mildred Burke, was really looking for a way to legitimize her claim as being the world champion. 
And after the retirement of Cora Livingston, there was another wrestler, another woman wrestler named Clara Mortensen, who had kind of become recognized as the overall generally considered women's champion. She'd won a few matches. She had some credibility and she was extremely attractive. She was called the eternal woman and she was just very pretty, got a lot of attention and was really seen as the women's champion. Billy Wolf contacted her, had Mildred Burke already and contacted her promoter out in Alabama said, listen, I think this match can draw. I think that if you put Mildred against Clara, it's going to be the biggest house that you've seen all year. And if it's not, you don't have to pay them. So the promoter said, okay, let's do this. And it ended up being the biggest house of the year. So this, this match went on tour, went on the circuit. And then on January 28th, 1937, they had Mildred Burke go over Clara Mortensen and officially win the championship. Now, what made that kind of notable is because of the rivalry that this had built up and traveling around, it was picked up by all the wire services and all the newspapers. You had two very attractive women in the Great Depression, you know, wrestling for a championship with Mildred Burke winning. And it was covered in newspapers all around the country with their photos next to it. So it was huge play. It was the most attention that a women's championship had ever gotten before. And two weeks later, the two of them had a, uh, a rematch. And the rematch, again, this is the, during the height of the Great Depression when entertainment dollars are, are few and far between. They had a turnaway crowd, 2,500 people, and then another 500 people turned away at the door, which for a women's match, a women's championship match was absolutely unheard of. But it really shows how big the star power was of Mildred Burke. And Mildred Burke would really be, along with Mula, the two most um, influential and important women wrestlers of the first half of the 20th century. So she had her first step to becoming the overall women's champion and, and really getting national acclaim on January 28th, 1937. And I think that's important too, because I don't know if people who don't know a lot about women's wrestling would even know of Mildred Burke. I mean, of course, Mula is the one that everybody recognizes and then probably Mae Young as you know two of the oldest pioneers in women's professional wrestling. So to come out and talk about Mildred Burke, I think that's amazing. Cause like I said, I don't think a lot of people would really recognize that name at all. Mildred Burke through the 30s and 40s and 50s was far more famous and far more well-known than the fabulous Mula. Uh, Mula has the benefit of her relationship with Nick Manns and into all the way up to the Attitude Era, obviously, when she was on TV every week, so she's more well-known. But during the time, Mildred Burke was a absolute superstar, a celebrity of, of the first class. And uh, she really did a huge deal to put pro wrestling, women's pro wrestling on the map, more so really than Mula did. Oh, I 100% agree. It's just like, like you said, because she has that notoriety and everything with the McMahons, obviously the mainstream wrestling fan would know more of her than maybe even ever hearing of Mildred Burke. Absolutely. And that's a great thing. Anyone who wants to find out more about Mildred Burke, Google her, look her up on YouTube. She was extremely ahead of her time in fantastic shape and really um, an underrated and an underknown wrestler that every wrestling fan should know. I agree. And the second item, it's a lot more recent. So I, I thought one older item, one newer item uh, goes back to January 24th, 1999. Okay. So do you think any ideas, any guesses to put you on the spot? Oh, well, 99 would be the end of WCW. No, Attitude Era, obviously, but... Attitude Era and Royal Rumble. Right. And that would be the 1999 Royal Rumble, where the 30th participant was China. China made history as the first woman to compete at a WWF, WWE Royal Rumble. She had the number 30 spot. Uh, she'd won it two weeks earlier in a battle royal, a uh, corporation versus DX Royal Rumble style match. She won that by eliminating Vince McMahon. She got the 30th spot in the Rumble, came in uh, to a huge pop, huge ovation, uh, went right after Mark Henry, who had made advances to her in storyline and <laughs> tossed Mark Henry out of the ring, uh, but then was immediately tossed out by Stone Cold Steve Austin. So she was only in there for 15 seconds, but she came in, she eliminated Mark Henry, got a huge pop and made history for being the first female to ever compete in a Royal Rumble. China, when I met her, it was at a convention. I think it was in Pennsylvania. I'm not sure, but like the sweetest soul in the world. And like, I just wish I could have met her more in her prime because that woman was an 
icon within wrestling. And I hope one day WWE can put her in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, absolutely. I think that she uh, she had a real rough road. Uh, she had to really fight to be treated as an equal. Uh, everyone talks about the the women's revolution and everything else and how much how hard the women had to struggle in 2015, 2016, 2017 to be treated, you know, as credible athletes and and so on. But imagine 20 years earlier, China was doing the same thing and trying to compete alongside and with the guys. And that was during a mentality where no guy was going to sell for a woman at all. And China still managed to get over and and make it look fairly credible. Oh, she was magnificent. Like I loved watching her back in the day and to see her transformation from being Shawn Michaels and Triple H's basically bodyguards becoming this badass woman with inside the ring that was battling the men. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And seeing her throw Mark Henry out of the ring in the Rumble, just, I mean, that was, uh, you know, one of the highlights, I think, for her. Def- oh, that's got to be up there on the top moments of China's history in the WWE ever. I mean... The first woman in the Royal Rumble, of course. That's it. All right, Dan. I appreciate it so much. I love these history lessons. And I'm glad you do. Yeah, and remember. Oh, yes, of course. I I was just saying, if you want to read more, you can always read my book, Sisterhood of the Squared Circle, The Complete History of Pro uh, Women's Pro Wrestling. And uh, there's also, it's not a wrestling thing, but my novel that just came out recently, it's available on Amazon, The Thing in the River. Feel free to check it out. if you like what you heard, you want to hear more, check them out and uh, you'll be glad that you did. Absolutely. Those are both available on Amazon or at your local books. Well, is the thing in the water available in bookstores yet? That is only on Amazon. I'm trying to make only that an Amazon, Amazon exclusive, okay. but the, uh, the Sister to the Squared Circle is available anywhere that you can find books. All right. Fantastic. Thank you again, Dan Murphy, for the history lesson of the month. And I can't wait to see what you have for February. Sounds good. Happy New Year, Steph. Same to you, Dan. Thanks.